Hello, everybody. What's today? Uh, Tuesday? Is that right? Tuesday. Hey, Ian. Uh, I, I forgot to... This happens a lot. I forget. Time gets away from me. So I did not have a chance to put up any kind of poll about this. So, you know, it, it fell to me to decide what to do today. And But I thought it was timely since we went over... I think it was on Friday that blog post about damn times about events that we could work on our own event random eventizer random event generator i've just hashed out a few things so you know sometimes i get ahead of the game a little bit in prep in prepping for these things and i did get just a framework for starting to think about doing this i also did pull out a couple of books I'm not sure about this one, but I brought it out. I thought maybe it would have some stuff, and that is Greyhawk Adventures. I know it has some things in it, but it's been a long time since I've taken a look at it. So I'm prepared to be disappointed by it not having tools, but maybe it'll surprise me. And then because it came up in that blog, I did pull out my Oriental Adventures books. We have that. We've got I, – I do have the blog up, so we've got that. I don't have either of these books, I don't think, electronically, or at least a quick search did not pull anything up. So I'm just going to have to – you have to bear with me if I have to open – crack these open and take a look. Actually, it's probably good. Hey, Null Terminator. Exactly. Yes, synergy. Synergy between Do It Ourselves Today and Lone Wolf Tomorrow. Absolutely. Okay. I'm just going to take a quick look at the table of contents in here in this Adventures in Greyhawk to see if I was at all correct about it having stuff that we could use. I think maybe it doesn't. So we got the appendix, which has zero level characters, which is not what we need today. There's a spell list. That seems to be about it. I thought maybe there was something in here, but like maybe I'm misremembering. Yeah, I think I'm misremembering. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. All right. So we'll put that one away. Just head on over to Oriental Adventures. All right. I'm just, maybe I'll read a bit once I can find the bit. Once I can find the bit, I can read the bit. I can read a bit of the bit once I find the bit. Uh, encounter events and encounters on page 107 if you have oriental adventures you have to flip to it i apologize for not being able to display it on screen but i don't have it at the moment 100 i'll maybe just read the blurb read what wisdom has been passed down from early an earlier age if you will okay i'm still in well this is really big yeah, I guess I guess I <laughs> I guess I'm not going to read it because it's it's a bit long, and yeah, this has a lot. So, jumping to the chase a little bit, we've got in uh, in Oriental Adventures there is the overall calendar, and here I have a very simple calendar that I'm using, and I'm using it here. You could swap it out with whatever you like, but this works for me. So I go with a lunar year because I find it's just more interesting. I like playing with the the moon cycles and the different seasons and all that. So I I use that. So that's kind of the basis for my calendar. So we're assuming 12 months, 28 days. So a clean, you know, uh, what like four, was it four weeks? Four weeks each season, I guess would be, you know, four seasons. I'll write this down just to make it even more clear. 12 months. Oops, thank you, but no thank you. Get out of there, thank you. Uh, 12 months. Actually, maybe I should do it this way. Oops, there we go. Four seasons, 12 months, four weeks of seven days of seven days days so i like to keep it nice and clean but i just go with the lunar i think it's more fun and i'm, I'm not you know whatever that ends out to you know 12 months times 28 days it's not 365 that to me is 
fine. I don't care about that because this is not our, this is not our universe. It's it's a magical, mystical fantasy universe, and so in our the whatever solar system, that's how it works. It's on perfect time because there's some god and demon in eternal conflict that hold it steadily so that the time's the same. Whatever reason you want to use the the uh, the tortoise upon whose back the the world sits keeps a steady steady pace so when we're rolling for dates basically i just have roll for the month and then roll for the kind of the moon moon cycle and then so i'm just keeping it dead simple right now and i'm i could do roll d12 and then figure out what dice it would take to do 28 days but i got to be uh, i got to be honest i don't know that i need that precision for me, just knowing kind of which handful of days it is. So if we zoom in here, at least in my calendar, the first day of the month is always this new moon. And then it kind of slowly, you know, over the course of those 28 days, comes back around until it ends again. All I really want is whatever. And I don't remember how many days, if it's six days under each moon, whatever it is. That's kind of all I care about. If I, I don't think, I don't feel like I need the precision. If I need, if I want to, I can just start on the first day, the first thing start, right? That could be it. Or I could roll a D6, maybe, whatever. But I don't, at the moment, I don't need to be precise like that. I think that just leaves it open to, okay, this week this is happening, or in this handful of days. And then you can just see how things lay out. Maybe you're like, ooh, it makes more sense if it, ends on, if it happens on the last day or the middle day or when is it, you know, whatever. Whatever you want to do. Fine, fine with me. Uh, but for right now, I don't feel like I need to get more. So you can roll a 365 die, or you could roll a D12, and then a, you know you could do a D12, and then a D whatever, and then a D whatever, don't get down to the day. I'm just not going to be, especially for this, for purposes of this, since we only have an hour to kind of get something going. I'm keeping it to that point. Ian says, "Got to be crazy, put some days between months." Uh, and in fact, one one of the things I was thinking, Ian, though I haven't done that yet, I was thinking of having. I do like having that end of year holiday, whether you want to call it Yule or something else, and that could be that exists in between the uh, the months to kind of bring it up. So you would have whatever those days, and then those in between days would be the Yule. But then I think I ended up. I think on the calendar I'm using right now, it just slots within your kind of December to January bit, and it's not an extra. Okay. So there we are. Um, so right now I have, and this is where I'm going to need, or I want to have feedback from you guys. One of the things that I liked about the About Damn Time was, what did I like about it? I like the seasonal events, the idea of something happening. And I like the, well, I liked all the events, but one of the things is I don't, I don't want, or I'm not sure what I want. I'm not sure if I want an event to end right at the season right oh we got winter is war but then spring and then it's it's over unless we roll war a second time and i don't know what the odds of that i kind of want i'm kind of only interested in when things start because then i want to use other methods to adjudicate it if, if if war breaks out i want the war to play out somewhat organically dynamically depending on what things happen we could use dice and oracles and different things to determine the flow of the war especially if it's in the background, if the party's not actively in it, but it's something that's happening in the back. Just, okay, it's happening, it's ebbs and flows, and then maybe we get to a point where it makes sense to end or we get an or oracular event. I don't need it to just drop drop dead on a certain day. Now, one thing we could do is have a duration, which might help also. I guess we could fill this in and we can decide whether to use it later. It's always an option. It's always good to have options. So we would call this one duration. I think we just need, maybe we could say days. I put wheels. I think I meant weeks. Thank you. I'll just throw that in there. So on the one hand, while I'd be happy to play it just by ear, maybe for this kind of thing, it's nice to have in mind whether, oh, this is days. And you get with interesting things. If we get a major war and it's days, so that makes us think like, my gosh, what did one side pull out of the woodwork on the other side? You know, what kind of atomic bomb type situation they dropped to then basically caused the war to end that fast? Or how did they, how were they able to sweep into the capital 
you know, to end the conflict, whatever. And then of course, weeks, months, years, if we get a storm of years, and I don't know which dice to use. I'm inclined to use a D6 for everything just because it's clean. But, you know, whatever. We could figure that out. We also have a bunch of dice, so maybe we could use a D20. Uh, we could decide what the what the odds of each thing happening. I'd probably want for duration. I think I'd want weeks to be the one that's it's mostly. And then after that months and then after that days and then years is the least likely. And then probably maybe local. I don't know. I don't know, 2d20. I don't know how to use 2d20, just like doing 2 to 40 or 2d20, talking advantage, disadvantage. Are you doing it like the tens and the ones where it goes from 21 to whatever? I don't know. I don't know. I I, I, I don't tend to like to use weird die sizes because it just it's just another thing that you have to explain or that some people aren't going to have i think the uh so i you know the the d66 is okay i i've i've now gotten to the point i've seen it enough and i've had to wrap my mind around it enough that i can remember that it's basically using one six as the one tens and one six as the single digits I think you can explain that very easily people don't though but i guess it's blog posts so that whatever they don't maybe they don't feel like they need to but uh, I don't know. So what, what are we talking about? So now the other thing is, well, I guess let's just start breaking things out before I just keep going. And another thing. And another thing. Um, so these I have right now as to how often you would roll. So these would be, you know, I'm, I'm calling it great, I guess I'll call it great events. Seasonally, we're rolling for major events. And then monthly, we might roll for minor events. Now, it's not to say there can't be overlap, because you could be in a year where something's happening, and then we roll to see what month, whatever it's happening in, and that's approaching, and then we're still rolling for the monthly events, so you might get something else happening but i think we want to generally odds of i guess odds of all three things happening i'm not sure what they would be and i definitely want to have some overlap so at least one of these options will be you know roll a major event i'll just put that in there now roll a major event and then one of the major event options will be roll a great event. That way there's some chances you get some kind of escalation. I like the escalation. I like the escalation type stuff. Much like in your, you know, your dungeon in Wandering Monsters where it says, oh, we're at level one. But then it says, oh, roll one from the next table up. And so you can kind of, if you're <laughs> lucky or unlucky, depending on how you want to see it, you can end up rolling up something really major. But for the most part, you're going to get, you know, the stuff that matches. So I'm just going to start throwing stuff in here. So definitely, I guess we're going to do a war or a, yeah, a global. And you can use global in quotes. I Like when I was looking at the scope before this, I was debating whether to have a continental and then a global. I don't... For me, global doesn't necessarily have to mean your whole planet is involved. And it's really global, I think, is everything on the board is moving, but the board that the players are involved in. So let's say if we were doing games of Game of Thrones and or you're playing in that world, unless the party was really interfacing with Esteros, I would say that global would really just mean Westeros. And maybe I should have a continental one. It doesn't mean that everybody and then what a global, or, or maybe we would say, well, because Esteros and Westeros are fairly close. You say, oh, it's close to narrow sea. Oh, blah, blah. Okay, so fine. So then global covers them. But if then there's, I don't know, Norsteros somewhere else, because I think they hinted that there was some other continent somewhere else, th that's not part of it. It's really just the, the board, the board as it stands that's kind of in play is part of it as global, as opposed to global meaning literally the entire planet. Hey, Terrence, long time, long time no chat. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna put assassination of a um, great figure. I'll put some. We'll we'll line up some sub tables here. What would be a great figure? Great figures, that would be like the head of your religion, you know, a Pope type character. Major religious leader. A major ruler. There's probably some other ones. Probably some other things there. But that's kind of who I'm talking about. And it could be that we could split them out. If it's just two, you know, if we end up and we don't think of any more than two, probably just figure to throw them just in legit. <clears throat> but uh, if, and I guess I'll make another note here. Just for definitions or glossary. And then global um, global the entire I'm gonna call it active hopefully folks understand what I mean there Frederick says are you doing the day of game as the day of play in the game uh well we don't have day in there yet but the day that an event lands on would be the day in the game, whatever the fictional day is. Now, of course, if you're playing real time following game time, then those will be more in sync. If you're not, you're not. But day, whatever the day is in the game. So if we're in, we're starting our game in January 1st and I go ahead and roll some events and I get February something or other for an event, that's February in game time, not February in our, our calendar in game. Fictional, fictional game. Hence, I have my calendar as a fictional calendar because this would not make any sense, or at least it would have tons of inconsistencies if this were a real calendar. But my my home calendar has a, a perfect lunar system, which I'm kind of just using here just so I have something. What other kind of year? So I guess would be a... Major natural disaster. Or maybe I should, I don't want to keep using major. Natural disaster with continental scope. So something like your, uh, not just, you know, you know when you're looking at a natural disaster, most likely we think of in our world, you can have a hurricane, which is awful, but sometimes they just impact, even when they impact brutally, just a local area. Or they could impact like Katrina or Sandy, large swaths and really impact, I guess you can look at it in the way everything is linked together, that ends up impacting the whole, you know, continent, or at least say um, uh, the United States in terms of her, Sandy or Katrina. But you can also have a hurricane that devastates a place like Galveston in what 1901 or whatever that is. It's a, still a hurricane, but it's not, it wouldn't be a continental scope hurricane. It would be simply a, not simply, but it would have a more regional or local scope. In that case, it would be, if you wanted to call it regional, regional to the Gulf Coast. If you wanted to say local, it would be, you know, Galveston. So it still can be a really, just because it's a local or minor. Does this doesn't necessarily mean or seasonal? Maybe it doesn't necessarily mean that it, it it's not devastating. It just means that in terms of the, the in terms of the amounts of the world actively affected by it, it's smaller. So you could be somewhere else and you didn't get hurt by it at all. Uh, so I'm just going to make a list of natural disasters here. These would be things like uh, well, we got uh, earthquakes. Floods. I'm gonna call them just. I don't know what they were called. Is there a worm word for kind of sea storms, seaborne storms? 
that's like hurricane hurricanes, you know, was it typhoons? All that stuff is kind of the I know that they're not all necessarily the same from a scientific background, but I don't care because we're not this I'm not playing a game where you're playing scientists. So it makes no difference from a terms of if you're there if you were there on the grounds in Galveston in 19 or whatever when the storm hit, it didn't matter whether you knew it was a hurricane or whether it was a something, you know, technically it was something else, doesn't matter. Right. So I just putting them all together is just a storm that's coming from the one of these massive storms that comes from the sea. Uh, cyclone. Yeah. Cyclones would definitely be one. Uh, what else could it be? And then we also have, we could put our kind of famine or uh, no, what's the not famine necessarily, but a uh, what's it called when it's super dry? Uh, why am I spacing out on whatever the word is for when it's oh it'll come to me it'll come to me or somebody put there all right so if you come up with more natural disasters you can put here Nell Timmer says maybe break down leaders a bit heads of guilds national or state heads well there's a so yes and no Nell Terminator. I'm trying to kind of pick these out drought thank you yeah why my brain was spacing out i'm trying to break these down already in terms of their stature so you've got and we can decide or move around folks from one or the other if you feel like the head of a particular guild assuming you have guilds major figures would, would include things like i, I keep on not wanting to say you know, guild, guild heads, mercantile family leaders, religious leaders, upper nobility, and the royal family, that kind of thing. So, and then, you know, minor figures might be municipal whoops we might say city leaders i don't know military leaders they would fall on a, i'm putting them one step down now we can talk about moving things back and forth it doesn't matter that much all this stuff is just really just uh Standing in, right? For you can you can figure out how what you would like. Oh, that's right. Tsunamis. I'm just putting a seaborne storms. Tsunamis would count. I know it's the it's not it's a bit different, but it doesn't matter to me that much. Again, seaborne. You could talk about if it's big waves, if it's whatever. All that stuff. I'm just putting together. You you know, like I just said, it's kind of like you can take this, and then if you want to be more. Uh, if you want to be more specific, you're absolutely welcome to. We can add more in there, but yes, definitely fires, plague, disease is another good one. Volcanism, yeah, you know, that's another good one. I've got flooding. I got flooding in there, but Terrence, but yeah, I, I feel you. Okay, so we got, you know, different levels. Great figures. Made, and, and, you know, like I said, if we feel like the guild heads, and there's a lot of this that's kind of, I don't have a particular setting in mind for this. So if you're running a setting in which guild heads, you know, the thieves guild leader is as, as powerful as a king, then you put them under great figures. If you don't have guilds or you just have something else instead, whatever, you know, move them around. This is not meant to be. Oh, and this is a swig of uh, what spindrift is this? This is blood orange tangerine spindrift for the working man. Okay. What else? So those got some. Is 
assassination of a major figure. Oops. Natural disaster with regional scope. I don't know why I capitalized regional there. Scope. What about that one? Oh, and this would be, oh, I forgot. Uh, I'm a global war, a regional. <laughs> I'll put the exclamation mark in there. I'll move that there. I'll see. We can add. We have a local conflict. Assassination of a, I'm going to call it notable figure, maybe is a better, and minor. They're noteworthy. And then, natural disaster with local scope. Okay, let's go back here. I'm going to call these notable figures. Minor just seems so minor. Oops. I'm not trying to insult anybody. All right, so we've got... And a lot of these are looking the same. And this is when, again, we're just kind of laying this... I keep saying again. We're just laying this out in a very framework. You know, we're looking at all the scaffolding. We don't have... We don't have all... We haven't... We haven't put the uh, the brickwork up. We haven't put the facade up. So this is not necessarily what the the final table might look like, depending on how we structure our, our tables. But it, you know, it might be. But even though these are going to appear to be very similar, maybe they'll end up being the similar down the board. And really, it's just a matter of everything is just going to keep reducing reducing um, scope. Though though you know yearly events. Oh, the other one we might want to think of is a well. I'm going to put as a yearly a great event. This one I don't think will repeat. A well, I guess they are going to actually no, they are going to have some co a cosmological, maybe just cosmic, a cosmic. Uh, what's the word? What's am I looking for? I guess we could call it event. I don't have. This is your something like a comet coming through. Something like that, right? Where <clears throat> something major is happening. And, and I think the other the other thing we have to think about. So a lot of these, as I'm thinking about it, right? There we are going to have a fair amount that are they're going to have overlap. It's just going to be in terms of the scale. Oh, it's it's a big disaster. Medium disaster, small disaster. It's a big war. It's a medium war. It's a small war. But there are some things that we can put in different categories, which is more about how often we want them to roll to come up. So whereas even though you, we might say something like a shooting star, which depending on where you are, you can see all the time. Or I don't know. I, I just remember one. You know, it seems to be a, really the amount of shooting stars you see is a lot about, I think, more about light leakage or, or what is it, light pollution than it is about how many are actually happening. So the one time I was out on a boat in the middle of the ocean and it was, you know, perfectly dark at night, it, I felt like I was just counting shooting stars. Maybe I was just lucky. It just seemed like there was, it was enough that after a while it wasn't even <laughs> amazing anymore. It's like, oh, wow, there's another one. There's another one kind of thing. But let's say a major comet or something like that, or a major whatever it would be. I don't even know. It might be fun to look up like what did people call comets before we knew what they were? Were they always called comets? And then we just sort of, it just, the comet became the ice, ice rocky thing or, you know, whatever, but we could come up with whatever that is. And then, you know, that's happening now, even though they can happen all the time and it really has nothing to do with the time of year, I probably only want to have one of those, potentially one of those happen 
a year. That's major, like your Halley's Comet type thing, something that's bright and coming across the sky and seems really portentous. I want that to happen. So even though you could you could argue that well these events kind of happen all the time and it's it doesn't matter too much I only want it to I only really want it to happen maybe a couple of times so having it as a great event or a yearly event means that I'm only going to roll for that once and then the only other time it might come up is another four times if I get it on the seasonal one which would be you know the the odds of me rolling that option on the seasonal events and then rolling that same option on the yearly events is low and then of course. You could have it well a minor you know it, you can roll up because of the way these tables are structured at the moment you could potentially roll up from a minor event all the way to a yearly event but still this is probably going to be pretty rare so that's what i want so even though it it might not be in real life something that happens you know comets meteors meteorites happen all the time i just want to deal with the ones that are kind of fun and big where i can narrate how this thing is cruising in the sky for who knows for how long we can roll figure out how long it's in the sky and then it can really feel like it means something and it's not something that's going to happen all the time so i'm going to put that there and of course we can think about well what stuff do we want generally that may come up like four times a year and what stuff do we want to come up potentially all the time well, i'm going to put some deaths in here Well, I guess what am I using? Figure. And, you know, like I said before, I can move these around. Maybe I want all deaths to be major events. Maybe I want them to be monthly. Maybe I want there to be more churn in terms of these figures. Probably not just because in terms of tracking, I might not might not want to, to, to do something like that. I have that much rollover, but maybe you do. So you can move it around. Birth in a notable figures birth in the family of ugh, come on in the family of a notable figure we got some births of a, what I call these, major figure. And, you know, I probably, uh, maybe, should I do this? Maybe I should condense it. Let me condense it. Let me condense it. We've been condensing things over having a same kind of subtable. So let me make another one. Let's call this life events. Right. So we have you know, birth, death, birthday, milestone, celebration, remembrance. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to call this a life event. And that way that can cover all of those. And we could potentially roll a die to decide what it is. Probably in terms of the birthday, I might take that out. Probably if it's something else. Unless what you want to do is when you roll up a birthday, you have to mark it down. Because uh, assuming you're gonna hopefully play many years in whatever your thing is, you want it to be consistent. So you don't want their birthday shifting around. <laughs> so you probably wanna check when you, you, know, you keep some kind of card for your NPC, you know, vert digitally, you know, on paper, pen and paper. And then 
we can write it down. That way, if you go through a year, you don't you don't end up you don't end up uh, you know doing the same guy's birthday in two months. Frederick Gorg says life event cancer. That's gr that's grim. We could probably though maybe we could have something like. What would that be? Illness? I mean, it is something would be talked about. All right, so I can, what What else do we need? So I can get, I'll just get rid of them so I'm not looking at them. Hello? Okay. Null Terminus is birth of a royal and the like might mark a festival. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, the festival, yes, it would. The, uh, that's, that's what would, I, I think we don't, I don't know if I need to say festival. I just think, I feel like for up to you, we can make it, I mean, we can make a table with that, I suppose. Like how, how might one commemorate these things? Commemorations? But yes, you, you, that would be really up to you. You you would then determine you would then determine in the nature of its celebration. So yes, if, if, if perhaps uh, if you know, the, let's take it an illness. An illness then comes up. Well, what might happen then? Well, maybe you have a vigil. Maybe you have. Uh, oh, I see. Reason. Oh, reason. A reason to keep it on the table for gaming purposes. Oh no, I am keeping it. I just moved it. I wasn't trying to get rid of it and I'll terminate it. I just moved it to this life event. So a birth. You know, birth in the family. Not necessarily the birth of. Birth in the family. I mean, all of these could be. I don't know. I, I guess it, maybe I won't. I don't know if I should where I should write up. But basically, all these could be like in the family of the individual or in the family. It was just a matter of uh, moving it to a sub table. Moving it to a sub table. They're not going anyway. Commemorations. What commemorations? So it could be a, a festival. Could be a parade. What do they call it? The ancient Roman version was that. Uh, oh, they had a name for it. I'll think of it later. Oh, a triumph. Could be, uh, you know, games. <clears throat> a religious. Well, is right. A uh, what is it? A vigil. Those are all possibilities. All right. So we got local conflict and assassination. I guess this could also be a life event. Should I move that? Maybe I should move that to the table also. Or should it be its own thing? Yeah. I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it. Hmm. Yeah, I'll move it. I feel like it, it's just another, it's another life event. All right. Keeps it a little bit cleaner, I guess. Let's see. Conflict. Well, let me look at. We've got the. What are the events? Let's look at. Let's get some. Now, the one thing is, I believe the Oriental Adventures gets very. 
into the nitty gritty. Oh yeah, so here we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. I was just looking at ambassadors. The first thing comes up. So a, a notable figure arrives. A what did we call it? A was it a major figure? And then a great figure. So who might come to visit? So they have that. So the list of some of the yearly and monthly events. Let me read out what they have instead of just mumbling through it. So they've got on the events an ambassador, an assassination of a lord, a birth, a comet, death of a lord, a major earthquake, famine, major fire, flood, major incursion. I guess would that be the same thing as war? A marriage, a new religion. Ooh, that one. That would definitely be under a yearly or great event. Uh, plague, a political plot, a rebellion, tsunami, visitation, volcano, or war. And they have a whole bunch of monthly events that occur depending on what your yearly event was, which I think they mentioned on the blog, which is also interesting. So maybe it makes sense that. I do like the idea that there might be a bunch of stuff that comes up because of one of the other things that's happening. <clears throat> that you could roll up your great event and then you can roll up other ones. Ah, that's kind of that's kind of cool. That's making me think rethink things a bit. We're gonna keep this as is. We're gonna go keep going with the guy. What else do we have? So there are some of their some of their things were interesting. What did I like here? They else they had. So they had. So incursion is not the same as war. I don't know. I kind of like they have an incursion, some kind of monster incursion. Would that be a great event? I think so, right? Any, any incursion worth its salt. We don't want happening too much. We'll throw that in there. I'm just trying to pull out what else we have here. There's something else we had. Marriage, that's a life event. I think that I have it under life events. I did not. That is definitely a life event. It's kind of a celebration, but that can be. Marriage is not just a celebration. All right. What else have we got on this list here? Tsunami. What's a visitation? Oh, I kind of like that. An outsider visitation? Man, I like that. I suppose I could look to see what they mean by it. I don't know if they give details. Let's see. Well, let's see what they say about incursion. Okay. Oh, yeah, New Religion. Let me put that down before I start reading more to that. That's definitely something that should not be happening many times a year. A year. Okay, so on the yearly events, according to Oriental Adventures on page 109, a major incursion is a major migration of creatures that enters, enters the kingdom from outside its borders. Although the migration is not war, it is not necessarily peaceful. The size of the incursion should be a proportion to the size of the kingdom. Thus, several hundred creatures would be a major incursion for a small province, while several thousand creatures would migrate into a large kingdom. I might just let other dice roll to decide that, but... So there you go. And I suppose I'm using monster here. I, I think technically in the old school sense of anything that's not a player character basically you know it doesn't necessarily mean it's evil or they're out for blood but they're monsters i suppose 
just for the sake of it, I'll change it to creature. So we don't get the connotation, because I think monster, you do get the connotation that you're supposed to kill it. Whereas they don't necessarily need to. And then outsider, I'm thinking, you know, your devils, demons, your kind of extra planar. Maybe I'll just call it extra planar visitation. Cthulhu showing up. Coming from behind the sun. I kind of like, see, I do what I do like. I may have to shuffle these around. I kind of like the fact that that there's sort of the major themes. Themes could be conflict, a natural disaster, something cosmic. So they just have, so they break down their, so in the Oriental Adventures, they break down their monthly events into three. What's happening during assassination, incursion, political plot, rebellion, or war. And then that's one category, all those four or five things. Then natural disaster is one category on its own, and then other. It would be it would great to have a, I think, something similar. Maybe even have more columns, break it out a little bit more. Null Terminated says, even a stranger from an unknown land would be a good outsider. Uh, sure. Yeah, I guess that might be maybe a great figure arrives. I might not use that for the outsider so much as some interest, but I guess it depends on what you're thinking. I mean, yeah, you could have, right? I guess it really depends on how earth shattering this person is and how, how alien they seem. So, but yeah, you could, uh, I guess I'll just put whatever, I'll put it in, I'll put them both. Pick. You can choose. Okay. So I, I do kind of like that. So maybe what I want to do with these is the great, maybe I'll change it. It's not really the event itself. Hmm. <laughs> a roadside picnic situation? Yeah, sure. That would definitely be a minor event. Uh, What's the word I'm thinking for? Because maybe this is not an advance, but really almost the theme, the, the, oh, I'll just have it there. So maybe I'll just themize these a little bit more. We're really looking at war. Whoops. Natural disaster. I'm just going to put exclamation points everywhere. Uh, I don't know. Was it, what's another word for not heavens? I don't know. I guess the cosmos. Cosmos. There's probably another word I want to use. Oops. I think. What else would be? So all these great figure ones, I'll kind of move them around. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put. A religious. Religious event. So I'm kind of setting these up. Basically, I'm setting these up as categories, right? And then we can roll on. Maybe these other things. Maybe I should. I don't know. Now I'm. Now I'm second guessing myself. Let, let me go to the side before I start rewriting a whole bunch of stuff. So let's let's look at our. I'm going to call them themes for right now. What kind of themes do we have? Obviously, we've got conflict. We've got nature. We've got religion. And I suppose nature, I don't know, I guess. Oh, 
conflict, nature, religion. What might be another thing? Just a. Oh, there's kind of like I'm trying to put like. That's probably a better word. Like there, I know there are other crises that can happen, right? These are all theoretically all these are crises. There probably should be some. I don't want it to all be bad. I mean, it, it, we have like births and things that are not bad. But um, maybe. I mean, actually, no, let me change. Let me change conflict to politics. All right. So that's one nature could be good, could be bad. And I'm not I'm not saying anything. Religion also could be good, could be bad. What do we what else is there? So what would be something? So a visitation or an incursion would be what? What would we call that? Obviously, if they're if they're negative, we would call that a crisis of some kind, potentially whatever. But if they're positive, but we would say that they are what? What's the, what's the word we would use? Mm, a academic science. I'll call it philosophy. Since we're kind of playing fantasy wise, we'll go with philosophy. In terms of there's a new discovery or whatnot. And let's see, we still need one for what happens when somebody comes. We have kind of a, I guess, culture. And then economy, All right? Economics, financial crisis, adventures flooding the gold market and whatnot. <laughs> I like the idea of economic crisis. Humanitarian crisis probably would touch a bunch of these. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So I, I like the idea of having a yearly, we a yearly theme, and this would be. So the idea with the yearly theme would be that this is something you could roll up. Part of what I liked about having this, so one of the main things that's driving this from my perspective is what I like is when somebody goes and wants to use a spell and ask about future events or go visit a soothsayer or have somebody come and uh, read the tea leaves, do whatever, that there's something there that you could point to. Oh, in the fall, this, we are in the year of... The natural disaster and this, you know, the fall is going to be the worst of it. I see leaves turning and bodies burning. Okay, great. And then we as the referees, we're still adjudicating things however we are, but we can keep our eye forward towards, okay, in the fall, some horrible natural disaster is going to come and kill us all. And so we got to prep for that. So I kind of like the idea of having these themes and then breaking down the themes into those events, which is kind of what the... Oh, it's got a, I can't, I can't punch it to there. Oh, I can. No, I can't. And then the themes then impact the actual events. If you will. So I'll probably have to rework these a beat, a beat. And I'll tell you what I say. Speaking of that, I like to name periods and seasons right now using an adjective generator and the Taraka deck. I don't know the Taraka deck. Season of the Dry Bishop, Blue Anarchist. That's cool. Do those, are those, you do those, and they'll terminate it. You, you generate those names every year? Or is it always that? Or does it shift like some kind of constellation or something like that? How does that, how does that work? But yeah, I think it's cool. And anything that gives flavor and for the seasons, both for the party and the players, it's kind of fun. And then it's fun for you or for as a GM because then it just helps. It helps giving you inspiration for things. 
So I think I like having a theme, and then I think we can start to break these down. You know, this this is not wasted time because we're all gonna we're gonna be using these same things, but then we can look at okay, because and and these can of course overlap. So from politics, we'll have local conflict for politics, whatever, right? Local conflict, but then also natural disaster can also lead to a local conflict as natural disaster then that leads to a resource shortage potentially which then leads to scarcity which then leads folks to being doing things out of desperation once per season okay that's cool i like it i'll have to look up a taroka deck i'm not familiar with it i, I know i've heard it before but i i don't don't remember ever looking it up um so we got some stuff going on here all right so i like this so then maybe what i'll do let's move these Let's move these aside for the moment. I'm just going to make some. Actually, you know what I can do? I can duplicate it. There we go. So this will be. So we can do minor. Political events. Ugh. Pol. Political. Polit. Polit. Call events. This will become roll a major political uh, spelling, please. Event. Oh, it's from Curse of Strahd. Okay, so Ian says Taroka was for the one from Curse of Strahd. It was like a deck of the major tarot cards, but replaced by more D&D-ish things. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, so yeah, you could just use, use uh, tarot. Use the major arcana from tarot. would totally work. I think that's probably where I heard it for. Or read it in one of the Strahd readings. So we get so the one thing that's interesting. I think one of the things. Oh boy, my where where is my head? Okay, when looking at these monthly to yearly events. The nice thing in the Oriental Adventures book is they vary or they're able to basically vary the – they're using a percentile. They're using a D100, and it's not just each – each. if you're looking at this chart, well, I think it's the same chart that's here. Let me go here. Is it the same chart? Yeah, this chart, which is what I'm looking at. And actually, let's just pull it in here. There we go. Notice they're able to vary things up. So each one of these, you know, one through five, six to seven, eight to ten, they they don't give us the percentages, but you could calculate the percentages. But between having variable die faces in each one of these rows and then you're able to have it on multiple rows you could take something like there's a five percent chance of an accident and there's a four percent chance i think or also a five percent chance of banded activity because they've taken these right which is you basically have zero to five or one to five is one and then from six to ten is the other so between a ten percent chance of one of those 5% chance of banded activity, but then here they're able to, you can add more, and then these are all kind of changing. This is just a 1% chance of a major fire, right? And then, so you, you have some different ways of, of, of varying it. I'm not going to worry so much at this moment, especially as we're, we're pretty much out of time. I'm not going to worry so much about that, but that's a fun thing you can play with, with creating basically a varied percentile type system, or it can be D20, D6, well, D6 is harder, but, you know, 2D6, 3D6, and have different ones. And then you can combine some of them, and then you can split them up, and then you have – you can really figure out, like, okay, well, during during Rebellion and War, we have, you know, 10% chance of banded activity, but then during Natural Disasters, it's up to, I don't know, 20%. I don't know if that's accurate or not. could be the same. Whatever. But you just get to express them. You can move them around if it makes sense. Also, you can kind of figure out all these things. It might be actually a good idea. Maybe I'll do it on my own to figure out the percentages for all these to kind of pull it, see where they land. 
Ian says he needs more tarot generators for D&D. They have that nice lenticular hit point press tarot deck that needs to be used. I don't even know that one either. But yeah, tarot decks in general, I think, are handy. Very handy once you figure out kind of how what things mean and how you can have the meanings shape by your uh, context. And then you can also play around with, did you get it you know, facing or, or whatever, uh, upside down or right side up, how that can affect things. Also, there's a lot of... A lot of fun, a lot of fun stuff. Okay, well, I think I'm about done with this for now. We went through kind of an, sort of a halfway through an iteration, and then I kind of thought about things a bit more, but that's kind of the process. So I didn't go through it in one phase and just rip it out, and here it's done, but that rarely happens. But I kind of like where I'm at in terms of having the theme of the year and then having that affect what's going to happen on all these all these things. Now it's a matter of taking these out and then putting them. I'm not sure whether I would use table and subtitles or write out a bigger table that just has all this stuff in it. Go back and forth. But uh, you know, there it is. I think this will give you a good idea. I the It's worth looking up. And I don't know how much it is on drive through It's worth looking up. Maybe I'll, I'll look it up after this, how much at least the uh, the PDF for Oriental Adventures is to get a hold of these original tables. You can kind of get some of the gist of it through reading that About Damn Times blog entry, but it could certainly add a lot. And I really do like that idea of having a little bit of a look ahead. And then once you have that look ahead, you can just think about that how that context, how you during the game session, it's another one of those kind of GM games, right? It's the the games that we as GMs get to play, which is how to take all this stuff that's happening locally and then see how you're building up. How are you building up to this moment? You know it's winter now, and you know in fall there's going to be a great war that's going to basically en encompass the entire you know world that's active in your game. So you go, wow, now you have to think about all when things are happening locally and to your party, everything's doing, how is that stuff all going to build up? How am I going to build up that context for the war? You can use oracles, you can use more dice, but you know that I've got, all right, I've got eight months and or maybe less. It could be like, oh, I'm in winter and this is going to happen in the spring. Oh my gosh. Whatever it could be, playing that. And that's one of those fun kind of GM games, right? A little bit of world building, a little bit of thinking on your feet. It's cool. So I like it. And then you get to, you know, and then hopefully your this stuff isn't just in your brain, but it's actually filtering out into the scenes. So as you're getting closer to this war, you see troop movements, you see defenses being built up, and the party will be like, ooh, what's going on? And even if they don't join the war on one side or the other, it really makes the world feel alive, right? Uh-oh, Ian put a link to that tarot deck. Hold on, let me see this. I'm just going to look at it really quick. The Fable Maker. So this is on, just because why not? What is this? This is a... Uh, hitpointpress.com and this is this no that's the animated wait a minute so which one is it i see so this is the deck the Fable Maker's Tarot is a fully animated tarot deck designed for use in your 5e games as well as Divination. Includes a simple booklet to guide you through the meanings. Well, where does the... So do you get... I'm not sure what you get. All right. So the... So, okay. So you get it. You get the actual hard... Hard? Physical deck. And then you get these animated digital ones. That's cool. Let's see some pictures. The fool, the magician, the high priestess, the empress, the emperor, the hierophant, the lovers, the chariot. Nice. Very cool. I mean, check it out. It's not cheap, though. 70 bucks. But obviously, it's super popular. Popularly popular. The physical ones are animated? What do they use, Ian? Is it? Oh, the physical ones, right? So are they using some kind of, what are they using? Uh, some kind of holographic? What? What? Well, I kind of want to see uh, what it looks like physically, if it physically, 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So like, apparently they're holograms. So I guess they do work in person. You know, they, where you tilt it and the animation goes, oh, that's super cool. All right. 70 bucks, but that is very cool. I will neaten this up. It might take me a day or two to get this to sharing, and then I will post it on the forums. And hopefully we can discuss, because I really would love for these ideas not to end with this when the stream ends, but to continue going through refining and development. Well, we'll see. I will post this there. Hopefully this was useful to folks. Folks have told me that these are useful, so I hope that they're not lying to me. Uh, but in any case, there you have it. Have a great rest of your day, night, whenever you end up watching or listening to this. If you could give a thumbs up on your way out, that would be awesome. If you feel like subscribing to the channel and you're not, that would also be awesome. Otherwise, game on, everybody. And I will talk to you later. Bye now.